For many Galwegians, the spiritual heart of the church in Galway is this building behind me and the community to which it's home. And it's a heart that has been beating here since 1642. The Poor Clares of Galway are the longest surviving female religious community in Ireland and at times in their history it really was a matter of survival. In a sense though their story doesn't really start here but on the continent in a place called Graveline, now in France but then a Spanish territory. There was an English speaking community of Poor Clares there and that's where Irish women had to go after the Reformation if they wanted to live the life of poverty and prayer established by St. Clare of Assisi. There were enough Irish women who took their vows there that they decided in 1629 to try a foundation in Ireland in spite of the illegality of their way of life. Initially, they tried founding in Dublin. That was far too dangerous. Then they moved near to Athlone on the shores of Loch Ree, a place they called with typically Franciscan love for the incarnation, Bethlehem. This new community, living lives of strict poverty, began to attract the attention of recusant Catholic families in Galway. And we find Galway surnames, Martin and Brown especially, turning up in profession documents from the 1630s. There was interest in the Irish language in this community too. Again in the 1630s, the community had a translation of the rule of St. Clair into Irish, a copy of which survives to this day. One member of the community, Sister Mary Bonaventure Brown, in her chronicle recalls their special form of prayer at that time, Eucharistic Adoration. The abbess, she says, would assign them to various times of adoration in twos or fours, and an hourglass in the chapel would indicate when it was time to get the next group of sisters. All was well in the 1630s, but the following decade was a very difficult time for the Bethlehem community because of a rise in military activity. A local garrison of English soldiers in Athlone began to harass the sisters. On one occasion, the sisters knew they were coming and fled, and the soldiers spent three days in the convent, desecrating the place, eating and drinking, trying on the nuns' habits, and eventually burning the place down. Again, Sister Mary Bonaventure Brown tells us that story, and adds that the fire left two things untouched, their wooden tabernacle and a statue of Our Lady, also made of wood. Shortly after this attack, the whole Bethlehem community, together with their statue of Our Lady known today as the Athlone Madonna, or the Black Lady, decamped in the summer of 1642 to Galway, at that time a safe place for Catholics, joining a little group of sisters who had already moved to Galway a few months earlier. In Galway, the Poor Clares began by renting a premises in the town centre, but in 1649 they petitioned the corporation for permission to build a house on Elon Altenach. Permission was granted, and that island came to be known as Nuns Island. The sisters didn't have a smooth time of it in Nuns Island though, far from it. Just a few years after moving in, Galway fell to Cromwellian forces. The convent was burned and the community had to be dispersed. Many fled to Spain and some died there, but others stayed here at the heart of the danger and the community regrouped again. The same thing happened again in the aftermath of the Williamite Wars. Again the convent was burned and the sisters dispersed. But none of these violent disturbances could entirely destroy the Poor Clares of Galway, and they remained committed as best they could to the life they had begun in this place. In spite of all their suffering and the uncertainty that surrounded them, they expressed their love of our Lord in the Eucharist by making with their own hands some extraordinary vestments and decorations for the altar which survive to this day. Nearly 400 years after their arrival in Galway, the Poor Clares are still living lives of hidden adoration of the Lord still singing his praises in the divine office and still carrying in their hearts the many prayer intentions entrusted to them by the people of Galway. Through many trials, through times of bigotry and violence, this community of poor Clares has persevered with the help of God, fearless and fireproof. <laughs>